Coming up, On Strike. We'll explain what it means to go on strike. Then, happy 100th. Former President Jimmy Carter turns 100 years old this week. Also, we're celebrating National Hispanic Heritage Month. And we'll explain the meaning behind the Jewish holiday of Rosh Hashanah and why sweet treats like this one are a part of the tradition. Tell me about babka. So babka is a sweet, twisted bread that comes from Eastern Europe. Plus, we're in San Diego for our picture of the week and backstage pass. Yeah! I'll tell you everything. I got juicy secrets. Our Kids Edition correspondent Drew takes us behind the scenes of the new season of the animated adventure Gremlins the Wild Batch. My favorite thing is going behind the scenes. Did you get to see any of the animations being created? Bits and pieces. Yes, it's a long process. We're just reading a script, we're in a booth by ourselves, and we're just trusting that we're doing what we're supposed to do. And part of the magic of voiceover is that you don't always get to see the animation when it's being created. Sometimes, and oftentimes, you just see it when it's all put together. You, you get to witness it for the first time with the audience. This is NBC Nightly News, Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's great to be with you. We have an awesome lineup ahead, including our pop quiz with a presidential twist. There's your hint. Plus some babka to sweeten up your day. And an aardvark is turning heads. Plus a bit later on, Gremlins, the wild batch, is streaming now. And we have a preview. Gabrielle, you are the voice of Elle. I hear you guys go on a big adventure this season. Sam, Elle, and Gizmo are embarking on a new adventure in the wild, wild west, and I really, really hope fans enjoy this new chapter of their lives. But first, let's begin with one of the stories making headlines this week. Dock workers went on strike this week from Texas to Maine. You might have heard your parents talking about this, and perhaps they are concerned about how this may impact you and your families when it comes to things like certain foods and even toys that are delivered on giant cargo ships. Ann Thompson explains just what a strike is and what's going on here. So what exactly is a strike? A strike is when a group of workers decide to stop going to work. They might be unhappy about how many hours they have to work, or maybe they want to get paid more. Imagine your whole sports team at school deciding not to play until everybody gets a turn to play. That, in a way, is a strike. This week, dock workers went on strike for the first time in almost 50 years. From ports in New England to Texas. Well, in the United States, workers are allowed um, to collectively form organizations um, called labor unions that represent their interest um, with a specific industry, like for instance, the automotive workers or the longshoremen. So currently, as many of you young people are hearing on the news, there is a strike. So that means the workers that are employed moving goods at various ports, like the Port of New York and New Jersey, the Port of Houston, the Port of Savannah, they have collectively said, we're not going to, to work today. We are going to strike until our employers agree to increase our pay. In addition to wanting a pay increase, the dock workers also want protection from their jobs being taken by robots one day. So what does this strike mean for you and your families? I don't believe the young viewers watching this newscast should worry about their favorite cereal being out of stock anytime soon. There are companies and workers negotiating to resolve the strike. Experts say right now Americans won't feel the impact, but that could change in the coming weeks if an agreement is not reached between the dock workers and the U.S. Maritime Alliance, which is the group negotiating for the ports. So if that were the case, three or four weeks from now, um, strikes still going on, we'd be experiencing higher prices in the grocery store. Many of our fresh fruits and vegetables come from Central and South America. Our cheeses, chocolates, and beverages from Europe. Um, so there would be an inability to bring those goods in with the ports closed. Many major retailers anticipated this strike, so the stores stocked up on goods 
including toys. So many of these big companies that you see on TV ordered all their toys and their goods early. So, I mean, the best news today is that inventories are very, very high and robust. And so unless the strike went on for four to six weeks, um, I, I wouldn't be concerned about not getting that favorite toy over the holidays. Okay, and thanks very much. In other news this week, former President Jimmy Carter turned 100 years old on October 1st. The 39th president is the oldest living American president. His home state of Georgia has been celebrating Carter's centennial with tributes and events recently, and the White House also took part in wishing President Carter a happy 100th birthday this week. Did you know that Jimmy Carter served as president from 1977 until 1981? Before his time in the White House, Carter was a peanut farmer and then went on to become governor of Georgia. After his presidency, Jimmy Carter became known for his humanitarian efforts around the globe and even won a Nobel Peace Prize. So happy birthday, President Carter. And speaking of presidents, it's time for our pop quiz. The question this week, which U.S. president is featured on the $1 bill? And by the way, no looking in your wallet. Is it A, Thomas Jefferson? B, George Washington, or C, Abraham Lincoln? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, time's up. The answer is B, George Washington. The first president of the United States is featured on the $1 bill. Abraham Lincoln is on the $5 bill. And Thomas Jefferson, well, kids, he's on the $2 bill. Meantime, National Hispanic Heritage Month is underway right now. It's a time to celebrate the different cultures and achievements of Hispanic and Latino people. We get details from our friend Tom Yamas. Across the country, kids and grown-ups are celebrating National Hispanic Heritage Month. Each year it takes place between September 15th and October 15th. But why does it start in the middle of the month? Well, there's a reason. The reason why they choose the date of 15 September is because Mexican Independence Day is the 16th of September and many of the Central American countries achieve their independence from Spain in and around this time. And so it's a good time to celebrate the independence from Spain of a lot of different countries. Did you know Hispanic means any Spanish-speaking country or territory like Puerto Rico or a person with ancestry from a country whose primary language is Spanish? Latino refers to a person with origins from anywhere in Latin America. Latin America consists of the entire continent of South America, as well as Mexico, Central America, and some islands of the Caribbean. It is a country in the New World, the Americas, where language is spoken, where Latin is its base because all the Spanish-speaking countries have, right, Spanish is uh, based off of Latin. There are lots of people of Hispanic heritage that we can look up to. Teachers say Hispanic Heritage Month is a good opportunity to learn about different traditions, cultures, and people, including trailblazers like Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. She's the first Hispanic person to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court. And guess what? She's also a children's book author. NASA astronaut Ellen Ochoa was the first Hispanic woman to go to space. And Roberto Clemente was the first Latino to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. I like to have my kiddos interview or research somebody that is of Hispanic heritage, maybe in a career path that they're interested in. You can also learn about different cultures by having some fun at home. Kids at home could invite their parents, let's make a dinner together and let's pick a country. There's all kinds of amazing foods that, you know, are popular in Spanish speaking countries. Uh, empanadas are the calzone of Latin America, right? You could make, you know, empanadas at home. They're super easy to make. You could um, have some dulce de leche ice cream which is amazing. You can have some alfajores cookies. You could have yerba mate tea that is celebrated in Argentina. Amazing food, amazing people, and just a few amazing ways to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. 
All right, Tom, thanks so much. Turning now to our picture of the week, we are headed to San Diego to say hello to this baby aardvark calf born in July. The calf is the first of its kind to be born at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. According to zoo staff, the baby aardvark is already on the go exploring the burrow and keeping mom on her toes. The pair is currently bonding right now behind the scenes. Did you know the aardvark belongs to the same group of mammals as the African elephant? Well, this week, Jewish families around the world will begin to celebrate Rosh Hashanah, the start of the Jewish New Year. This holiday is filled with many traditions and celebrations. It's also a time to enjoy some sweet treats like babka. We get details from our Kids Edition correspondent, Julius. Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year. It celebrates an end to the previous year on the Hebrew calendar and a fresh start to the new one. This holiday usually falls in September or October and lasts two days. It also marks the start of the Jewish Holy Days, including Yom Kippur. During this time, families often gather together, attend special services at a temple or synagogue, and celebrate with lots of unique traditions, like the blowing of the shofar, usually made of a ram's horn. During Rosh Hashanah, it's customary to wish friends and family a Happy New Year in Hebrew by saying Leshana Tova Umetuka. That means, may you have a good and sweet New Year. And speaking of sweet, one of the most important traditions during Rosh Hashanah is eating delicious sweet food. To find out more, we went to the headquarters of Russ and Daughters, an iconic store more than a hundred years old that specializes in traditional Jewish foods in New York City. Tell me about the kinds of foods that families eat on Rosh Hashanah. Different families have different traditions. Typically, Rosh Hashanah is the New Year, and the foods are very symbolic because they symbolize our hopes for a sweet New Year. So we get to eat a lot of sweet things on Rosh Hashanah. Things like, for example, uh, challah, for the new year, we actually, instead of made it, making a long braided loaf of, of challah, we make a round loaf like this to symbolize the circle of life. And there are raisins inside to make it sweeter for a sweet new year. Apples and honey is a very traditional, symbolic combination to wish each other a sweet new year and honey appears in lots of different recipes, so honey cake is another delicious one. These foods are especially popular with Jewish families whose relatives come from places like France, Germany, and Eastern Europe. Some Jewish families, especially those with relatives from Spain, Portugal, North Africa, and Middle Eastern countries, also add dates, pomegranates, pumpkins, and even green beans to their Rosh Hashanah celebrations. One of my personal favorite treats for Rosh Hashanah is called babka. Tell me about babka. So babka is a sweet twisted bread that comes from Eastern Europe, probably from the 18th century or so. And with the, the Jewish immigrants who came to America, you know, they brought their, the, their foods with them. And so originally actually babka was made from the remnants of challah and then sweet things were added to it like, like jam um, or honey. But once chocolate became more popular and, and available, the chocolate babka appeared. And that really is um, something that happened here in the States. I learned firsthand how Russ and Daughters makes their famous chocolate or cinnamon babka, which they ship all over the world. This is the fun part. Beautiful, so now if you open this up, wow. look at that. Nice. Wow. Right? Okay. So much chocolate. Cheers. While there's plenty of tasty food involved, one of the most important parts of Rosh Hashanah is the opportunity to reflect on the previous year and set intentions for the new one. Why is it important for kids to celebrate traditions and holidays like Rosh Hashanah with their families? 
Holidays afford us a moment to take a break from the intensity of our daily lives and what we're all caught up in and to come together with the people closest to us and recognize that we come from a lineage of generations who have come before us. And by continuing to practice the same traditions and tell the same stories, it puts us in contact with that. And I think it really gives our lives meaning and it allows us to, to make meaning of it and see how much has changed and how much has stayed the same. And it's also an excuse to get together and eat great food. Shana Tova. Uh, Julius, that was terrific. Thanks for doing that. Finally, in this week's Kids Spotlight, Gizmo is back with a new epic adventure, Gremlins The Wild Batch, streaming now on Max. Picks up one year after the first season and is set in the American West. The animated series is what we call a prequel to the popular Gremlins film franchise. Our Kids Edition correspondent Drew takes us behind the scenes and speaks with some of the cast. America is our species' chance for a new beginning. It's a new adventure packed with mystery and magic. Magic is all around us. And gremlins. We have to stop them. I think that season two is just a, a lot bigger. It takes place a year after our original journey. So all of the characters are a little bit older. There's a lot of intrigue there. In season two of the animated series, Gremlins the Wild Batch, Sam, L, and Gizmo travel from their homes in Shanghai to San Francisco. Welcome to San Francisco. Gabrielle, you are the voice of L. I hear you guys go on a big adventure this season. Sam, L, and Gizmo are embarking on a new adventure in the wild, wild west, and I really, really hope fans enjoy this new chapter of their lives. You okay? I've been having these dreams about my mom. Find me. This season, Elle is trying to find out who she is, and I think that's so relatable because I started voicing this character when I was like 12 or 13, and now I'm 19 years old, so that's over a six year span I've been playing this character. And you know, during that time, you're trying to find who you are, and that's similar to what Elle is going through. I'm not talking to you again until we arrive in America. Ming Na, you are the voice of Sam's mom. What is this season about? Well, you have to tune in and find out. There's going to be a, a lot of amazing characters that's being introduced. As the character of Mom Fong, I am constantly just trying to protect Sam and Gizmo and Grandpa. Well, just trying to keep him in line. You hear that? We're finally leaving! Actor James Hong is back as the voice of Grandpa. Well, why wouldn't I hope for that? Grandpa is a spicy character that loves to explore things, but he always, like most grandfathers, tell their grandson to be careful. Season two is packed with lots of action and thrills as the kids go up against new creatures. <laughs> How did you come up with your voices for these characters? I did a lot of improv. You want to escape? You tag along with us. So in my callback, I improv and I played back and forth with Isaac, who plays Sam. And that was really how I found the legs for the character was through the improv and just kind of letting go. But it's my own speaking voice, just a little heightened. Don't celebrate. The only reason we're leaving Shanghai is you. This is all your fault. And for me, you know, I'm a mom. Uh, I have two children, and uh, of all the characters I've played and voiced, uh, I feel like Fung is the closest to who I am, so I didn't have any problems just using my own voice, using my own pitch. The animated characters are really cool. I wanted to find out more. My favorite thing is going behind the scenes. Did you get to see any of the animations being created? Bits and pieces. Yes, it's a long process. They had the initial design of all the characters and that helps to set the mood and the feel of, of the animation and the project. The only time that we really get to see the characters and even the background, the beautiful backgrounds that they've created is um, when we come back in to do what's called looping, where there's certain added lines that they need from us. Other than that, it's really just the uh, still drawings that we get to see. 
So we're just reading a script. We're in a booth by ourselves and we're just trusting that we're doing what we're supposed to do and it's gonna match up and it's gonna come together and it always does. Part of the magic of voiceover is that you don't always get to see the animation when it's being created. Sometimes and oftentimes you just see it when it's all put together. You, you get to witness it for the first time with the audience. Gremlins the Wild Batch also offers some important life lessons for kids and grown-ups. I think the lesson to be learned is that um, we have to stick together. No matter what the differences are between the older generation and the young generation, the kids have to listen to granddad sometime in their life and vice versa. <gasps> I'll tell you everything! I got juicy secrets! And for kids who want to become an actor or make movies one day... I would practice in front of the mirror. <laughs> What's up, Doc? Wabbit. Hey, Wabbit. You dirty, dirty rats. You know, I did all those voices practicing in front of the mirror. Do you have any advice for kids who want to be actors or make movies? I would say make sure you really, really want to do this as a career because there will be times where you will wake up and be like, oh, I am so tired. Oh, my back hurts. Ah, oh, I really wish I could go to my best friend's birthday party today, but I have to go to work or I have to film this audition. So you have to make sure that this is absolutely what you want to do. And you have to make sure that you want to do it for the right reasons. The best actors love acting because it is a part of their soul, it's a part of their heart, and they can't see themselves doing anything else. Do we have what it takes? I don't know! I've only been in America a week! For Nightly News Kids Edition, I'm Drew Hubbard. Back to you, Lester. Drew, that was great. Thank you very much. Well, that is going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com and we'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. Thanks for watching, guys, and remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.